Okay. So, good evening. And I am sorry we are late. Very sorry we are late. Very sorry we are late. Hello, Instagram. Hello, Bernard. Bernard rang me up today to tell me that Elon Musk decided this morning to wake up and have a brain snap and reduce the price of Teslas by forty or fifty thousand dollars before he even told his marketing department. Probably that's what he does. He comes up with these ideas before anyone in the company knows, and he shoots them off. And I'm lucky I hadn't put my deposit on. Hello, Instagram. Thai food was beautiful. Thank you so much, Bernard. Hello, Tanay. Hello, everyone joining in on this wonderful evening. Why is it wonderful, David? Because I am back home. This is the first time I've been home on a Sunday for about one month. I have been working every day of the week when I include Sunday as a travel day. Good evening, Tim. How are you? Good evening, everyone. What a great night for us to talk about the five rules of life inspired by Dr. Jordan Peterson. Hello, Nick Cooney. How are you? Hello to you all. The five rules of life relevant to children. And Mole, how are you? Good to see you. Good to see you all. Andrew, Kelly, Luke. And I can see you all on Romper Room. So, guys and girls, Sanjay in the UK. Hey, that rhymes. Sanjay in the UK. Susan, good to see you, Susan. Rob Travato, how are you, my friend? All right. So, gang, let's get the show on the road. And what are we going to talk about? Happy Mardi Gras for all the people that enjoyed the Sydney Gay and Lesbian 41st Mardi Gras. And you know what I've noticed over the years? Hello, Lisa. You know what I've noticed over the years? All these people that used to make funny gay jokes, you know, sissy there, those little quiet condescending jokes, all of a sudden, it gets nice and acceptable and trendy and they join the bandwagon. Particularly, particularly the ones that decided commercially it would be good for their business when the yes vote was happening and all of a sudden they actually would go off and they would put everything in their business with that beautiful rainbow color you know, saying yes, 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 the same people who only maybe a few years earlier would be making snickering, uh, discriminating remarks. So a little bit about a little bit about gay people since we are in that week. So I have been gifted with at a young age having a close friend of mine who, uh, like I'm talking early, early teens, came out of the closet and I was friends with him before I knew he was gay. So I got a, actually a very good education experience that gay people and non-gay people are exactly the same people. Some people drink red wine. Some people like white wine. Some people are vegans like Susan, and some people eat meat. By the way, if you're Greek Orthodox, do you realize that today is the last day that you can eat meat for 40 days? There is some religious education. I was informed that that today when I went to church, and I went to Rookwood Church, the cemetery. There's a Greek church there because I can kill two birds with one stone and spend time with my brother where he's been buried. And then the church is actually only 30 meters down the road. So it's a good ritual for me on a Sunday now. But getting back to 
the thing about gay people and non-gay people being the same people. So, yeah, I just find it ironic that I, you know, and I've noticed it, some of the people that I used to be, you know, that I would call, uh, 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 that would, uh, would be homophobic, uh, when it actually became cool, trendy, commercially um, a good idea to change their website, put the yes thing there, they jump on there. But I just say to you, it really makes no difference whether someone is gay, straight, transgender, black, Indian, Muzi, Orthodox, Buddhist, Catholic, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, a Hindu, gay, bad gammon player is no different to a uh, agnostic, uh, um, uh, bisexual checkers player. The point I'm making is there are better things to worry about in life. So let's move on. And I like the, I liked, um, actually, I think the Mardi Gras on TV now, now that I think about it. Someone said to me, it's on SBS tonight. Anyway, um, what was the theme that you said? Fearless, fearless. I like that. Fearless, not giving a fuck about things. That had a good, yeah, I like that. Fearless. Yes. I think that will be the tone of this podcast today. Pretty much everything I do. Fearless. Not caring too much about the views and opinions of others, particularly when they're not paying your mortgage. So, gang, the five rules of life. Five rules of life. Hello, Cesar. Hey, I want to come and speak in Turkey. You sent me a note. I'd love to come and speak to Tur in Turkey. So, rule number one. So, Jordan Peterson, he's one of my favorite authors. He's a psychologist from a university um, in Canada, and he has written a book called The 12 Rules for Life. Highly rate him, highly intelligent, positive, inspiring, yet intelligent, not rah rah substance to him. Really like this guy. And what I'd like to say to you is that five of my rules have been inspired out of his book, The 12 Rules of Life. But by the way, he has actually become famous not so much because of the 12 rules of life, but because he basically said, hey, Jim, how are you going? He basically said at university, they were making him change the language he was going to use. He was not allowed to go in to a class and say he or she, that he would have to say the words they. And he said, I will not change my language. So if you want to watch some good interviews, watch him, watch him um, speak to Kathy Newman. So Google Kathy Newman, Jordan Peterson interview, outstanding to watch. But let's move on to rule number one. Rule number one for the five rules of life, and I adore these lives, and you know, I do my best to live my life with these five rules. Rule number one is this. Care for yourself the same way you would care for a loved one. Care for yourself the same way you would care for a loved one. Think about that one. Here's the deal. What I'd like to say to you is that most people will care for someone that they love more than they'll care for themselves. Now, if you're on an airplane, you'll notice the pilot will tell you if there's an emergency before you go off and help anyone else, before you go up and help anyone else, what you need to do is to pull your oxygen mask and help yourself. Because without helping yourself, you can't help anyone. So rule number one is care for yourself the same way you'd care for a loved one. So basically what we're saying is, if you try and save your kid, but you don't save yourself, what's gonna end up happening is the kid's gonna die as well, right? So I've gotta share with you a research study that was done on people that have had a kidney problems. And they have dialysis for three times a week. See you at Bentley. Yes, I will see you at Baxter Bentley soon. I will tell you. So what happens is, picture this. People that have kidney problems, they will have a dialysis three times a week for six, seven hours. They'll sit at a hospital, right? And then if they're lucky enough, then if they're lucky enough, what actually happens is that they get a kidney transplant. And what happens is this might take six years or seven years to get. So picture this. These people have gone through hell. 
They have been going in three days a week getting blood dialysis for their kidney. Then they get a transplant. Hey, Aaron, then they get a transplant. And what actually happens is this. They're lucky. They win the lotto. They get a transplant. Guess what happens? They're told, hey, Mike, Mike, mate, Mike McColl, let me just say to you, you, my friend, if there's a guy on Facebook or Insta you want to follow, follow Mike. I'm not going to go into it. But that man has shown me kindness times 10x. He knocked me off my feet. He knocked me off my feet. Uh, International Realty, I think the company is. Mike, can you confirm that it is? And anyone on Insta or Facebook, follow this guy. Anyway, cut a long story short. These people that get on a kidney dialysis are told... Now that you've got someone else's kidney, because you were transplanting, so you've won the lotto, you get a kidney, right? You've got to take anti-rejection drugs. Anti-rejection drugs, right? And guess what? Most people, after they've gone through all of the hell of having a kidney transplant, years of suffering, are then told... You need to take anti-rejection drugs. Very simple. And guess what happens? They don't take them. Yet the same people in a clinical trial, they were tested. People that were told to take drugs for themselves versus giving their pets food. They give their pets food. They give their pets vitamins but they don't look after themselves. Hey, Shane. So guys and girls, what does that say to you? That as human beings, I know we think about self-interest, but I've got to say to you that a lot of people deep down will care more, will care more about something that they love than themselves. And what the rule is, show the same love to yourself. Show the same love to yourself. And for me, look, For me, I've got to learn and I'm learning slowly because over the years, people want to get a hold of me more because my whole business is built on myself. I don't own a McDonald's franchise or an Apple shop or something that I can outsource to other people. It's me. It's me coaching. It's me auctioneering. It's me speaking, right? So at the end of the day, I have to learn to say no more often because what actually happens is... Like, I want to show love to a lot of people, but every time I say yes, I'm potentially saying no to myself, and you may be in the same boat. So rule number one, care for yourself the same way you would care for a loved one. Rule number two, rule number two, the wrong companions drag you down, pick your friends wisely. I'll say that again. The wrong companions drive you down. They drag you down. Pick your friends wisely. I like that. Panel Sublake has a nice ring to it. Guys and girls, listen to me carefully. Rotten food doesn't get better in the fridge. I'll say it again. Rotten food does not get better in the fridge. What I'm saying there, guys and girls, is this. the peop- Look, I say it all the time. If you hang around with four dickheads, you become the fifth. But I think a lot of people have what I call tolerations. They tolerate things. They tolerate things. I don't know. Sometimes it's a simple thing as their mobile phone screen is cracked. There's a crack in their mobile phone screen and they keep looking at it. It's $100 to fucking fix, right? And they keep looking at their mobile phone screen. They keep tolerating and tolerating. Man, just fucking fix the fucking phone screen, right? Because the way you do one thing is the way you do everything. Remember that. The way you do one thing is the way you do everything. But guys and girls, that second rule, the wrong companions drag you down, pick your friends wisely. I will say to you, your life will dramatically change dramatically change, and I'm saying to you how, 
by simply reducing 10% of the toxic and negative people in your life. Like, really, if you know what these people were like, like day one, like you know now, would you adopted them as a friend? Would you have adopted them as a friend? If the answer is no, you know what you need to do. Let's move on. Rule number three. By the way, do me a favour. Here's what I'm going to do tonight. I'm going to give away a free 30-minute coaching session. A free 30-minute coaching session, one-on-one. It'll be done by Zoom or by phone for the guy or girl that on Facebook or Instagram, going to pick one person that puts down and says, So there's two rules. Rule number one, they have to share the video. Share it. Share it like it's got to be a big share. And that button is on the bottom of the left. You press that share button and share it to as many people as possible. Rule number two is you will write out three reasons why you think you should win a 30-minute coaching session. And by the way, can I just tell you, When I am coaching people, I've got to thank my professor, Anthony Grant, who taught me the real art of coaching. Not these fake coaches who haven't actually gone through any university studies to understand psychology. He taught me the power of cognitive behavioral therapy adopted with great questioning. And I'll tell you why. Because... A lot of times when I meet someone for the first time, it's really hard for me to give them advice that they can execute. So what I generally do is I ask a lot of questions. They say to me afterwards that it's the questions I asked that was the best advice I gave. The questions I asked them was the best advice I gave. And the reason why is when I ask a question, a really good question, the person then asks themselves that question and that is where self-limiting beliefs are exposed and transformations take place. So good to be joined by Dr. Steve Georgiakis. Steve Georgiakis, my friends, is one of the intellectual brains of sport in Australasia. And if you want to get a piece of his mind, friend him up. I don't know whether he will accept, but I can tell you if if he does, you'll be a wiser and smarter person for it. But let's talk about rule number three. Progress is made by comparing yourself to your past achievements not to others. I'll say that again. Progress is made by comparing yourself to your past achievements, not others. And what do I mean by that, guys and girls? What I mean is this. Too many people try and work out that they're moving forward by comparing themselves to another person. Listen to me carefully. Your competition is not another person. Your competition is your ego. Your competition is your procrastination. Your competition is your shit attitude. Your competition is you don't wake up early enough. Your competition is you're not putting in at the gym. Your competition is you don't have clarity. Your competition is you've got a shit diet. Your competition is you haven't mastered your art. Your competition, guys and girls, is you've got no sense of urgency. Your competition is the person that's looking in the mirror. So that's rule number one. Rule number two is this, that when you compare yourself to another person in the world that we operate in that has a social media so interweenly twined in us, what we're actually doing is comparing ourselves to fakes because let's be quite honest, that the most of the people that take a selfie sitting in a restaurant looking like really happy, hey, guys and girls, let me tell you, that is like 1% of their real life. And man, may I say to you, they may have spent 20 minutes getting that photo looking fantastic. And can I say to you, they may have a smile on the face for the one second the camera's gone off, 
but you might not see the depression that they've had for most of the week. So please don't compare yourself to something that is a fake world. Because I have to say to you, there's a term that I've talked about before. It's called milkshake duck. Milkshake duck is people that create a life better than what it is on social media. Real lives and social media lives are generally not the same lives. And the other reason why you shouldn't compare yourself to other people is very simple. That you don't take into account the same variables. You're not taking into account their experience, their tenure, their location that they're working. You're not taking into account all these other factors. So for God's sake, never ever compare your chapter 1 to someone's chapter 10. Hello, Jonathan. Let's move on. Rule number four. Rule number four. The world is full of injustice and in terrible things happen to good people. I'll say it again. The world is full of injustice and shit things happen to good people. I know that. It's happened to my brother. He was a good person. A much better person than me for that for the record, but a much better person than most people I meet. But something shit happened to him. It's not his fault, but it's become his problem. And it's become our problem. But here's the deal. Even though the world is full of injustice, even though terrible things happen to good people, don't ever blame another person on your life. And the reason, hey Flinny, and the reason why is this. When you blame another person on your life, you take away the one thing that you've got, the power to make a decision, the power to make a choice. Because things in your life will get better by choice, not by chance. And the minute you turn around and say, it's not me. There's nothing I can do about it. It's their fault. It's bad luck. You take away the only power that you have that you can do something about it. And I'm saying to you right now, you don't want to be a person like that because then you become a victim. And once you become a victim, you will never become a victor. Remember that. Take ownership of your life. Your decisions shape your destiny, as Mike Nichols says. And I want to share with you the term, the black swan. The black swan, when the English came to Australia and they got to Perth, they saw a black swan. They were shocked. They were shocked because for them, black swan did not exist because in the UK, there are white swans. And that freaked them out. They thought, how is it possible? I have to say to you, if you Google Definition of black swan, you know what you get? You get something along the lines of this. An unforeseeable event with major consequences. Guys and girls, we all face black swans in our life. We lose our father. You're going to bury people you love. You lose a close sibling like I did. For some people... They get betrayed by their partner who'd been screwing someone else for five years and they had no idea. For other people, it's, it's a financial breakdown. They lose their house. They lose everything. For other people, they have a mental health issue, bipolar, and there's darkness on and off in their lifetime. I don't know what your black swan is, but I'm letting you know that black swans are happening everywhere in the world. And all I'll say to you is that if you haven't had a black swan, most likely it's coming. And I'm going to tell you that, you know what? Black swans are not optional. Falling down is not optional, but staying down is. And for me, thank you, Tanay. And for me, guys and girls, and it is going to become a podcast, Snowy, we have decided that we are going to make it a podcast. But you know what? In the meantime, when we're getting 10, 20,000 views within 48 hours, 
you know what? It's like writing a book each weekend. And we keep going with it. Because to me, the book in 2019 is the spoken word. And the spoken word can be on a podcast or it can actually be on a video. So, guys and girls, just remember, if you're going through a black swan now, take it from me. Tough times don't last. Tough people do. And I'm telling you, if you're going through a storm, the person that goes into the storm and the person that comes out of the storm is a different person. That's the point of the storm. Number five, our far, last final rule. Fix problems when they're small. Fix problems when they're small. It doesn't matter what it is. You lose, you lose your buyer on a sale, you ring the owner within a minute to tell them. Fix problems when they're small. Listen to me, guys and girls. Fix problems when they're small applies in business, applies in life. Stage one cancer is better than stage four. Fix problems when they're small. Right? To any guy or girl. And I know that there's a lot of young kids that listen to my rants. I can't get over the amount of parents that have told me in the last four weeks when I've been touring over Australia and New Zealand how many of their young kids are watching the Sunday night rant. And I don't take, I don't take, I don't take for granted the fact that I've got someone's attention and, that I, and particularly young people might be influenced by what I say. Hey, Sammy, good to see you. Incredible agent. I don't take it for granted. But if you are a young person here, listen to me very carefully. The world owes you nothing. It was here first. Remember that. And I think a lot of people have booked now. And mom's telling me her seven-year-old is listening. And if, look, for the, those that are 20, 25, listen to me. The world owes you nothing. It was here first, right? Someone's been bullshitting to a lot of young people that, you know, you've got entitlement or that you can work smart and you don't have to work hard. Someone has bullshitted to people, right? That's all bullshit, right? You've got to work smart and hard, not one of the two. The next thing is, if you are a really young person, when I say fix problem when they're small, and this has been inspired by what's happened this week by, you know, George Pell. Now, I'm not making a comment. I'm not going to go off and make a comment here because at the end of the day, it appears that there's an appeals process and I think that there may be a possibility, who knows, that what happens is he's successful in his appeal, but it might not be successful in his appeal, right? But listen to me very carefully. I just hope, by the way, I just hope that that the guy wasn't prosecuted because everyone hates the Catholic Church, right? And 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 so they so they should because it's got a fucking shit record when you look at you know pedophilia. I think that the, the, the numbers are saying like seven percent. 7% um, is a high statistical rate of sexual molestation there. And that's another story altogether. That's another story altogether because personally, to be honest with you, I actually think like most Catholic priests, I think, I'm not a Catholic, right? But most Catholics, most Catholics, right? They can't marry. They can't marry, right? So think about it. You can't marry. You can't marry. There's a problem, right? Because I think that very few people on the planet don't have sexual urges, right? So, like, you don't have to be Einstein to work out sexual frustration will be caused. Now, I know in certain other Christian faiths and other religion, you can get married, right? But anyway, put that aside. I really hope, I really hope that the guy, George Pearl, isn't copying it because everyone hates the Catholic Church and they thought, you know what? You were responsible because you turned a blind eye to stuff and you were a leader there. So what we'll do is we'll mail you here, all right? Um, I hope that's not the case, but let's just see how this thing pans out. But I'm not going to make a comment about that. What I'm going to make about a comment about this, listen to me very carefully. If you're a young girl or guy like your seven-year-old that Admol has just told me has been listening, if you ever, if you're a young kid, seven, 10, 15, 18, I don't care. If you're ever a young kid, you don't wait 20 years or 10 years or a week 
to tell your mother or father that someone touched you and you know it's wrong. You did nothing wrong. The person that touched you is the monster. They're the bad person. So you've got nothing to get scared about because the whole world, the police, the fireman, the FBI, everyone is on your side. You've got nothing. And what has happened is a horrible monster has actually touched you. You've done nothing wrong. So what the problem is, when you don't fix problems when they're small and you report it like the same day, what actually happens is bigger problems happen. And I've got to tell you, that's what I think's gone on with, you know, a lot of people that end up committing suicide. I think what happens is that they've kept things inside. They created a story. I was responsible. I am complicit. I actually caused it. I'm part of it. It's, it's you know, it's, I'm isolated. I'm suffering desperately in silence. Hey, guys and girls, it doesn't matter what it is. A leaking roof, if it's raining, fix it when problems are small. If you've got a fucking lump on your breast, trust me, stage one is better than stage four. If there is a problem with your vendor and you're not getting buyers coming through, right? You don't wait three weeks to tell them, hello, Mr. and Mrs. Vendor, we have a problem. I've got to say to you guys and girls, you tell them straight away, Mr. and Mrs. Vendor, it's been four days, I'm getting concerned. No one is looking at this property. Even when they come online, they don't bother to go to the next step. It's either your price is too high or the marketing is poor. And I'm getting worried because we're about to move out of the sweet zone into the stale zone. And I don't want to be like a car on a busy road sitting there like a lemon that everyone goes past saying, shit, there's a problem with that. So guys and girls, as I finish here, I'm going to say thank you so much. Do me a favor, guys and girls. I am going to win, give that prize. We're going to give the prize out next week on the Sunday Night Ram. We'll announce the winner. And what I'd like you to do is you've got to share it. If you're on Instagram, you tag someone. I want to get some good share of this video. Why? Because I think the five lessons that we covered today were extremely useful for people that were young, old, in real estate, not real estate. Guys and girls, I'm so happy to be back in Sydney. Have a great week. God bless you.